I'm back and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to do a review over these fantastic guys. I've been waiting to get my little crafty mitts on a hold of these since they were launched. I found out about them a little bit too late and I missed out on them and I've been waiting for months for them to come back into stock and I'm so happy that I finally got them. Um, these are the original ones that I spoke about uh, when I did my review of the Crafts Companion ones. Um, and some of the shapes are similar into the other ones but there are different ones within these sets so I'm glad I've got uh, all of them uh, to work with so I'm going to do what I did on my other review I'm going to show you the dies and then I'm going to work, show you how they all go together um, so let's get started so this is the first package and this is the circles and tall arrows now in these ones you just get two long dies in each of the packets. The Crafters Companion ones came with a sort of medium sized one and then a little shorter one. Uh, these ones are just in a nice long one so you can adapt it without having to fiddle about uh, moving it along. Uh, if you've got like the medium one and you wanted to make it longer this gives you the option without having to do all the faffing around with it. So this is the circles and the tall arrows so we'll show you those ones now, I've got them all in front of me, I've got them all uh, cut out like in uh, true blue peat style so I think we'll do the circles first so you'll see the bottom one comes out all together on these ones Ooh, wrong way, there we go uh, so it all comes out and then you end up putting this part onto the top if I remember right uh, Sam, who uh, owns the company at Made to Surprise, she uh, advises you to put a little notch in the middle of the top of the die so that if you're going to put it um, along the spine of a card then um, you know that you, uh, where you have to line it up to for, the, for it to uh, bend around the uh, right way on either side. So again it's just as simple as placing it on where you want it to, uh, it to be putting some low tack tape or washi tape on, running it through your machine and then you're away. Um, the only thing is if you want to do that with it going down the spine uh, with these ones then you need a, um, a bigger die cutting machine. Uh, you can cut out pieces like this uh, through your normal die machine and then fold them around so there are options to do. I am going to do uh, some cards uh, showing uh, how to do that um, but this is just if you want to uh, you can make a top to go on the front of a card you know there's different options so you can use them if you haven't got the uh, larger die machines it's just if you want to uh, cut directly into the um, the center fold of a card then you need one of the larger ones okay so same as before this one's come uh, out completely that's because of the these ones are all just um, what are they called score lines, and then this one's an actual cut line, so that's why that so I not went over there then. So that's why the bottom one comes out. So I figured out I find it easier working from the bottom upwards. So you just push it back the one above, and then you tuck it underneath the bottom one. Okay, and then you just do that all the way up. can put a little dot of glue to hold them down if you want underneath the tabs that's up to you really can't wait to uh, get going and uh, have play around with these just thought I'd do the review first before I uh, did any videos on it and then all the way to the top there we go and then with this one this is to create the uh, the illusion that you've got another cut part there so you would position it just underneath that little uh, tab there where you'd uh, tuck it normally anyway and then you would place it at the right um, I'm trying to think of the word but it won't come out <laughs> so that they line up together and then all you do oh, glue, and you just put 
little dots of glue on there. I'll put your glue on first if you're thinking straight and then just pop them in like that and then that finishes it off. And then your bottom one, if it's at the bottom of your card, you can uh, just snip uh, these little bits off if uh, you're not wanting them. So you can make this shorter, you don't have to do it the full length of it. So this it just makes it easier for doing longer pieces rather than having the two separate ones that you do with the Crafter's Companion ones. So that's circles. And then this is the tall arrows. Again, it's exactly the same. Really, really easy. I've cut them out on a... Um, a thick paper I can't remember what GSM it is I'm afraid sorry um, but they're really easy to fold and just crease up a little bit with your fingernails you can use bone folder as well if you want there we go and then it will go this way around so if you just pop your glue on the side that's going to be facing down and then just put a little blob on the opposite side of the V where it's going to go and slide it underneath and then just marry it up with how it is on the next one down and then that finishes that row. Okay, so easy enough. So that's the tall arrows and circles. Then the next one is curbs and squares. I really, really like these ones. This one, I think it looks like um, lace on a corset. So if you were doing um, sort of a wedding card, it'd be quite nice. You can weave some uh, ribbon through these. These, uh, this one's quite wide. Curves ones. Sorry, I should have read it out already. So this is three and a half inches wide the plate, but the the actual curves are three inches. So uh, obviously you need this bit round here for it, for it to actually work. So. Your minimum that you need to cut it wide would be uh, three and a half inches if you're uh, doing it that way but if you're wanting to do the, uh, the crease line for like I say you're going to have to uh, use your bigger machines so that's your, uh, your curves and your squares this I think it looks a bit like um, photo strips you know like what you get from um, you know in photo booths like whether, where you get your passport photos from anyway looks a bit like that to me so um, that would be good for on uh, memory books okay so we'll go with the curbs first so exactly the same all you need to do is just push it down and tuck it under I find it easier than actually yeah, holding it up and just doing it this way. And then if I do want to put some glue on them, I can easily do it afterwards because uh, it's on the paper, it's easy to move. You'll find your own way of how you prefer doing it. This is just how uh, I found working with them. burnish it if it's a bit thicker than that you go down with the bone fold but you don't really need to with these ones and then this exactly the same as the other ones a bit of glue 
Now, if you are wanting to do the uh, like the wrapping around the edge, this sort of look, but you haven't got the uh, die cutting machine, all you do with these is um, score your piece of paper in half or card, whatever it is that you're using. Don't fold it yet though, you just put your crease down the centre, do your cutting, then uh, do this part and then fold it and burnish it. So if you do it beforehand it can uh, make the uh, paper go a bit bubbled and you don't want that. As long as you've got your score line and you know where you're going to line it up and that was one of, another reason why um, Sam says it's good for uh, putting a line in your dies. So that's the curves. Zoom a little bit up for that, you can see it all in one shot. And then this is the squares. So exactly the same. Now if you've got double sided coloured card or paper, then it gives you a really good effect. Totally different. Whereas this you can do it on a coloured piece of card and then put it onto a different coloured piece of card. So you have got options to do it that way. Just make it work for you for whatever it is that you're wanting to do. I don't think that if you haven't got those big die cutting machines that you can't do it. Because you can, there's just different ways of going around and doing it. So, right, okay, so this one is coming around this way. So these pieces that I'm showing you how they go together, I'm going to be keeping these as references for if I have... Uh, I have a mental block and I can't remember <laughs> which way around it's supposed to go. Right. And look at how far down we need to be. And then that's that one finished. Like I said, it looks really like Ash looks a bit like a train track uh, going that way. Oh, that'd be quite good for uh, boys' cards or girls if you like trains. And then the last one is wide and double arrows. Now, this was the one that I really uh, wanted to uh, have a go at because I've never seen one sort of uh, this size before. Um, again, these ones are a little wider. This one's. Very noisy bird outside my studio today. It's uh, about two and three quarters the actual plate, and then this one's two and a half. Whereas the circles and tall arrows I didn't measure for you, but that's one and a quarter, and then this one is one and a half. So uh, the first uh, packets are the, the uh, narrow ones and then these are obviously your wider ones. And then with this one, your centre marks there. And I can't remember what I said, but if you mark it on the back of it, because obviously it's the back that you're going to be seeing when you're taping it down to whatever it is that you're making. So we'll go with the wide arrows first. And this is basically just another version of the tall arrows that I showed you in the first packet. There we go. So again, that's looking uh, like a, 
this of course that one I think so is a little bit wider I like how it's got the diamond in the middle and then pop a bit of glue here Use the ones below it just as a as a guide as to where you need to stick it down. So Ooh, wrong way. So that's that one. Now this one is was the most fiddly one. I had played with it before I uh, come on camera, and um, I don't know whether if it's just because of the uh, the double arches, I just found it a little uh, more awkward to get it underneath. But the the arrows are quite. Um, Talking like the mountain pieces, so you've got to bend it a little bit further back to actually get it tucked under. So it's definitely better doing these on a paper rather than a, a thick card because it could just be you could do it, it's just it could be a little bit more of a stiff. You, you're trying to do it, but. It is worth it. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous die. I love it. Now these did come in a, um, a launch with some funky flowers. I think that's what they were called. I have got the flowers. I managed to get all of the flowers, but I missed out on the on these actual dies. So I've been waiting for them to come in to use these other dies because I wanted them to um, go together. See, that's uh, it now. It's um, just tucking it behind the other ones without tearing the one below it. Because I did that when I was, uh, I got a bit too heavy handed. That's not um, the item's fault, it's mine because I just got a bit too heavy handed with it. Stood a brain blank then or we're doing with uh, the point of it. Now um, I've just had a thing, you know these little points here you can choose whether to either have them at the front of the one below or behind. So that will we're all going wrong. I think I've done one that was one way and one the other one. I'm just keeping them uh, behind for today um, but it's up to you because it's got that other shape holding it down can have them going over the other ones they don't have to always go behind so as you can see got that's behind and then that's in front that's what I've done oh, see it missed one there so these see I'm going wrong now I'm just tucking them behind please ignore that to brain it malfunction because <laughs> sorry I'm very tired so uh, I'll blame uh, sleep brain so that one no let's go the other way around there we go so this one again we're just going to pop some glue on the sides and it sounds to come out there we go about the uh, collal glue if you get it anywhere it will just rub off which is always good especially when you've got a dodgy brain like mine today right there we go so that's the double arrows 
So I'll bring my packet back up oh, wrong way. I don't want to come and make that person. So that's the wide arrows and double arrows. So that way around. And then I'm trying to keep them so they're in the same packets ready for when I'm going to put them into storage. Your curves and squares. So again, these are your dies. It's a nice big uh, wide diagram. And then the first ones that we looked at were the circles and tall arrows. some really really good dies. Uh, so in comparison to the Crafters Companion ones I um, I prefer these ones because they are longer and I can just snip out the parts that I'm wanting so I f prefer these ones because they've um, they give you that option whereas the other ones you've they've got to mess around with um, placing them together and then just hoping that your die don't shift um, you know, so you get them all in line, but then again, I do like the Crafters Companion ones because if you are doing a smaller thing and it fits within that area, then that's good too. But I really do like these ones, I find these uh, shapes just really, really pretty. Especially, there's so much options of what they actually could be, um, you know, on your cards and what um, themes you can use them for. So I hope that's been helpful and watch out for future tutorials and I'll be using uh, these dies. So if you've enjoyed it, if you could give me a thumbs up, that would be appreciated. And if you've not subscribed, if you consider subscribing as well, that would be appreciated too. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.